the navigable river at Bishop Stortford ceases at the causeway and it becomes a natural river as can be seen in this old photograph at Hazel End. A sketch of the 1874 Ordnance Survey map shows the river in a channel to the west of Waitmore Castle where today there is only Old River Lane and Bridge Street with no river to cross. The floodplain to the north and west of the castle are meads or meadows cut for hay and then grazed by cattle. There is a whole network of intersecting ditches and channels, probably many centuries old. By the late 1960s, work was underway to alleviate flooding through the aptly named causeway. The floodplain appears to have been backfilled, which may have made flooding worse, as it would have reduced flood storage capacity. The main channel was dredged and the bank profiled. The weir has caused significant silting of the river channel and acts as a barrier for fish travel. It has led to unfavourable changes in the nature of what should be a free-flowing and crystal clear chalk river. A project is currently underway to remove the weir and restore the river to its proper chalk river characteristics. The purpose of the Stork Valley Nature Group today was to record the river before the removal of the weir and to return at a later date to assess the impact of the changes on the river. So it's Wednesday the 9th of, uh, Wednesday 9th of August, a lovely morning after a horrible wet day yesterday and this is the walk um, at Grange Paddocks along the river and we're going to have a look at the, uh, at the old river and uh, have a look at the, the weir removal project as well. So this is a plantation of trees where we're a little bit unsure as to the, what they are. They might be the genus Sorbus, but they could equally be the genus Viburnum. And we think they're probably a Gelda Rose which is a bit strange to get a plantation of Gelder Rose because ordinarily they're a hedgerow plant really. And this is the notice board telling us all about the Waterside Stortford project and um, uh, all about um, uh, Sir John Barker who was a, a big man living in the house here. Um, and the Waterside Stortford project encompasses all the river through Bishop Stortford including this part here. So this is the, the Chalk River here. Uh, flowing nicely with a gravel bed, as you can see. <laughs> so this is looking towards um, the site of Cannons Mill, uh, which would have been up the channel up this way. And in front of us here there are some patches of water weed, which is the water starwort, which is coloured trichae, the water starwort which is one of the ones which is a, a nutrient tolerant one and also on the bed of the river there is quite a lot of, um, um, uh, of growth um, it's, it's algal growth and organic silt and such like and, and there are a shoal of fish which I'm now attempting to find on but it's really difficult there we are and they, we think there may be a combination of dace and chub small chub but not trout. Well, they might, they're more likely to be chub. Are they? I think, I yeah, think they're they're they've got... The smaller ones are dice, Bob. Very likely. Um, they, they're, they're silvery, aren't they? So, at this point, the river is, is flowing reasonably well, and the bed of the river here is quite gravelly as you can see and um, it uh, um, is still moving in a reasonable depth so we'll compare what's happened as we go a little bit further and by the time we get to this point not only is the channel heavily shaded but the flow rate has slackened right down and zoom in on the riverbed here and you can see that it is getting really heavily silted up 
And this is the point opposite here where the Bourne Brook enters. But by this stage, as you can see, the flow rate is very low and it's becoming, the channel is becoming quite badly silted up. There's not a huge amount of difference in the readings. N not a huge amount. No. No, no, no. no. So this is, uh, this is what the riverbed looks like at this point here. And the gravel is still visible. Um, but there is significant amount of siltation here because um, largely um, dogs and such like going in the water and stirring, stirring it up and there's insufficient flow to carry the silt away. Right at this stage then the, the, the channel is becoming heavily vegetated. Um, in the foreground there's some this bit of purple loose strife. We can see here purple loose strife. Um, but equally in the background there is burr reed. Uh, the emergent burr reed and it's largely blocking the channel up. Um, the water will be finding its way through but that gravel bed has now disappeared. I can only hear it. Uh, hear it. So it really is going to be very interesting to see what happens here when the weir is removed and the flow rate is increased exactly what is going to happen here. Here is some of the burr reed here on, fl on, on flower. Will they not take the reeds out then? No, I don't think oh. so. I think they're just going to let the natural processes oh, take okay. place. There's the burr reed on flower. See why it's called burr reed? Yeah, it's got burrs in it. Uh, uh, interesting enough, at, the, at this point here, there is the burr reed in the background, but in the foreground now, we've got quite a significant flow of water, and in that water is the other burr reed which is the unbranched burr reed waving in the stream. So there's significant current here at the moment, but the water is all concentrated over to this side. At this point, the channel is heavily overshaded by alders. And as a result, the, the, um, the reed mace and the unbranched burr reed um, is not favored anymore, but we've still got in the channel here is the unbranched burr reed as you can see here. Green old harlows, um, it's right set back. You can see the purple loose stripe, and I saw a smaller, slightly. Oh, sorry. Carry on. Oh yeah, a smaller, slightly paler purple in a big, big area of it, and I learned it's marsh woundwort. Well, maybe yes. And at at at, at this point. Um, the, the channel as you can see the flow rate is really slow and it's getting very very silted up um, uh, and over overshaded so it's a huge contrast to what it was at this beginning so this is just one final um, shot before we get to the weir and we've got the unbranched burr, the branch burr reed on the opposite bank a lot of in channel unbranched burr reed a lot of overshading and it's going to be very interesting to see what this looks like if the weir gets removed. So now we're a short distance upstream of the weir and this is the current situation that we see um, with what looks like quite deep water. Must be a deep layer of silt, a lot of overshading. Right, so here we are here we are at the weir at long last and here is the riverbed upstream here is the weir running we've had a little bit of rain recently and then we've got the river downstream here and the um, the thinking is that um, it will return the riverbed up so this is the stream the river downstream of the weir at the moment and in the distance um, you can see under the bridge here there is uh, what you might call a riffle and the riverbed here it's moving quite quickly and it is nice clean gravel and the, the idea is to try to that this is what the, the river upstream will return to uh, we just steadily pan round now
Now here is the weir as it stands at the present time. And the, the theory is that the increased flow velocity will help to keep the gravel bed nice and clean and um, hopefully stop all of that eutrophic algal growth forming.